One of the great things about being a mixed media artist is an opportunity to work with a whole bunch of different methodologies and tools and materials. And on today's episode, we're going to do just that. We're going to create something that's going to allow us to have some foundational acrylic paint. And then on top of that, we're going to add some cut paper this week on Mixed Media Masters. Hello makers and welcome to the studio. If this is your first time here, then so happy to have you along. We're going to be doing some fun stuff today as we do every single week. So if this is the kind of thing you find interesting, please subscribe. We'd love to be able to talk to you on a regular basis. Now this week we're going to be working on a truly mixed media type of uh, material. And I'm going to start with a, a good piece of heavy duty watercolor paper here. And what I want to do first of all is lay down a foundation of paint as my background in essence, my background colors. And so I have a, a number of uh, different series of uh, acrylic paints that I'm going to be working with here. And the objective here is really to create something that is going to give us a look and feel that's going to really work with what we want to do. Let me give you an example of some things we've done in the past. So this what I want to work on today is going to be part of an, uh, an extended series I call Out and About. And it really is just these different places that you may go as you go out into the world, but kind of thematically. So for example, if you were down by the beach, what are the colors and what is the sensation of that compared to being in a forest, compared to being in a garden, compared to being in the desert? You get my point. And so we want to be able to create some sort of backgrounds or some just effects that we can work with and then we'll come back and we'll dress it up a little bit further. So let me show you how I end up doing this. And I'm going to start uh, basically by grabbing a couple of uh, colors here. I have a magenta that I'm going to work with here. And uh, what do we have here? This is a more of a turquoise or teal color that I want to work with. And these guys, these guys work well together. And I'm thinking within the context of what I want to do on my piece of paper is I want to have kind of some different stripes of, of color that we can work with in the background. So I'm going to start by laying down a, a bit of a foundation. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to just over my paper, I'm going to add a couple drops of paint. I'm going to just kind of go down here a little bit. Okay, just don't want it to be too uniform, but an opportunity to say, okay, there's some paint right like that. I'm going to do the same thing with my magenta. By the way, if your paints have been sitting around for a while, it's always a good idea to give them just a quick shake before you use them. So you get all the pigment that you want in here. All right, so there we go. And there we are. So this is a good starting point. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my platen roller. And this is one you've probably seen me use a number of times if you're a regular at the channel. And this is generally used for removing, uh, taking ink and putting it onto a printed surface, something that you would use for block prints or something like that. I love using this as a way to just move paint around, uh, as well as it's a fantastic tool for adhering things. If you want to glue pieces of paper to a paper, this, this uh, ends up pressing it down nicely. But in this context, what we're going to do is we're going to use it to smear some paint. So I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to roll along like this. Okay, you get a sense of how that's going to work. And I've got some things going. I'm going to come over here. Let's get some, uh, some more. Pick up some paint. And again, we might have to repeat this a few times to get the full coverage that we want. But let's, uh, let's drop a little bit more blue in here. There we go. There's some blue. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Since we're going to want to fill this whole area up. Okay. And let's do the same thing with the magenta. Let's get some more in here. And this is going to look pretty cool by the time we're done. And we're able to control the direction of the paint as much as we can because we are rolling it in specific directions. So again, do this. And again, do this. And one of the things you can also control here is uh, how much border you have. So for example, if I want to pick up a little bit of paint here, I can create an essence of border. So I have a white frame. So I can say, okay, I want the color to stop this far from the top or the bottom or the left or the right. And it's just an opportunity for us to have a little bit of control. And we don't want to overdo it here. We don't want to make it all muddy by over over rolling it, I just want to make sure I get some of these areas. But we're going to get a good combination, kind of a modeled effect of our areas where we have a little bit of white showing through and we have our combinations of magenta and teal working together. Um, it's a little heavy on the magenta to be honest. I'm going to add a little bit more teal just to balance it out here as well. Magenta is just a more dominant color in this context. So let's just get that up there. There we go. That, that changes the dynamic pretty nicely. And we get a little bit more blue. All right. 
Now, as you can see, that is not hard to do at all. But the cool thing about this is this is going to be a great foundation for what we need to do next, which is we're going to take some colored paper pieces. And once this dries, we have something we can adhere to, glue onto. We're going to come back in here and we're going to dress this up and we're going to make it into something. I, I don't know what it's going to be yet. It's going to be awesome, though. We'll find some colors that can work on top of our paint. So let's let this dry. And uh, once that happens, we'll come back in and let's get some colored paper on this. Three days later. Welcome back. Now, as you can see, our paint has dried and we're ready for the next step. And by the way, when we're working with a project like this, where we have a painted background, we don't want to hurry it along because if this paint is not fully dry or the paper is not fully dry, it makes adhering pieces of paper to it a lot more challenging. So we're going to give it plenty of time. And by the way, uh, you can hit this with a hair dryer if you need to speed things along. I have a video which I'll, I'll attach to the end card for you guys if you haven't seen that. Just the process of being able to make your paint dry a lot faster if you need to get to, uh, you know, other things. But in this case, what we want to be able to do is use this as our background for what we want to really build in front of this. Now, these are bright colors, but they're rather subdued. And because of the matte finish, they're really not popping that well, which is good because we want it to be a background. In order for us to uh, kind of work on this, I want to think about some colors that will work with the magenta and the teal background here and really pop things. Where this background color will support the colors on top of it, but they will stand out from the background. That's the objective. And I'm going to be working in my in my <laughs> my magic magic milk crate of fun here, which is where I keep all the scrap paper from uh, previous projects. And uh, we'll, we'll pull some stuff out and see what we have here. Um, I'm thinking some oranges and some uh, some yellows would look really good. See how nicely that pops against the background, for example. We're not going to make it all crazy bright, but we'll uh, we'll definitely have some splashes of these different oranges. And even this tan seems to kind of work with what we're doing. We'll put that off on the side. Um, do we want to work with a, a bright red? Well, you know what? Once again, a bright red may be the kind of thing that really pops against that background and uh, can be drawn out. And uh, so we're going to just kind of just choose a palette to begin with. It doesn't, there's no right answer. Here's uh, some blues, which are a little bit more subdued, certainly, but we don't want everything sitting on top of this to be incredibly blinding bright. So maybe a couple pieces here that will work. And the objective is to just create some cutout shapes that we can kind of drop in here. Almost like uh, we're looking at, uh, I don't know, it's almost like a, kind of a column of, of animals or creatures or things from an environment or flowers, whatever you want to do here can really take this up. And, you know, the final, the final conclusion, the final answer is going to be really up to you and what we can do here. Eh, that may work, that may work. I'm just going to, again, I'm going to grab a few different colors from, uh, from my bin of scraps and... Uh, uh, that kind of matches the background maybe too closely, but you never know. You never know. It may work for what we need to do. All right, let me just grab a couple more here. Here's a hotter pink, and again, that may not be what we choose because it's already in the background. And I have, uh, oh, this will pop nicely. This gray color will pop nicely. And again, how we combine these colors is really going to set the mood of this piece, so we want to really think about it how that's going to work. Let's, uh, let's start off with something relatively simple. I'm going to use this gray that I just pulled out of the bin. And I'm thinking what I want to do is create kind of a blobby shape of some sort that I'm going to be able to drop in here. It doesn't need to be too large, but let me just come in here and create a, a gray potato, so to speak. There we go. Something that will allow us to have a, an irregular shaped piece. And again, if we start taking and dropping these pieces into place, and we can dry fit everything, of course, and just get a sense of, hey, but I like the way that this color pops against the background. I like that a lot. It's really a good, clean color. Now, by the way, and we may not be doing an awful lot of that in this particular project, but just to share with you, if I had a secondary color like this pink color, I just have a little tiny piece, and I dropped that, that could actually serve as some sort of a, a color on top of this color if I want to get more complex. I think I'm going to go relatively simple and what I'm doing here today, but you can do what you want to do here. All right, uh, let's come in here. I think this pink color will be a good color. I'm going to create something. I don't know. Maybe it's going to look uh, like a like a plant of some sort. All right, let's let's find out. It's going to yeah, a frond. All right, is that a frond? <laughs> Looks like a hand. Uh, we'll do that, and let's make it a little bit wider here. And again, we come down here. 
All right. And again, I'm trying to create some rather organic looking shapes. They don't have to symbolize anything at all. And what's really fun about them is when we put them into place, we can orient them differently. Maybe this looks better like that. Maybe it looks better like kind of like a jellyfish if we do that, right? So anyway, that could be the kind of thing that we decide that we'll drop something like that in there. And by the way, when I'm working with the different colors in here, I may not want to choose to just have one spot of color. I might want to actually have this gray matched up somewhere else and this pink matched somewhere else, or maybe have three different things that I can work with. And so as I start to choose my palette, and I'm going to start by just creating single colored blobs or pieces here so I can get a sense of uh, how this works. Let me, you know, I don't know. Again, I'm just kind of creating something that will serve as an element in my background here. Let me just pull this out here. And uh, you know what? I may just create a, a vertical piece that is really just kind of a wavy line. Let's do that. That's going to be nice. So that might be a good border. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see how this works. And so if I were to take this and put it, you know, running down the right hand side, that that might actually work really well. Okay. And again, what we're trying to do at the at, at the end is to create something that when we look at it as human beings. Our brains go, oh, the colors, the shapes, the combination, the, the contrast, all of this works together to make us happy. That's really what art is all about. It's about creating something that evokes some sort of an emotion. In this case, I'm going for happy. I mean, we can go for morose and depressing. That, there, that art's out there as well. We're going we're gonna to stick with happy today. And uh, let's get some of this, uh, this brighter orange in here as well, in this case. And uh, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create something that's going to be a little bit more of a, an oval shape here and uh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna be clever yeah watch me be clever uh, I'm gonna grab my utility knife which I have right here and uh, let me just give myself a little bit of space to cut here if you can see this I'm gonna just work here and I'm thinking you know what I'm just gonna create a couple uh, a couple holes in here just use my utility knife to just create some shapes that I can cut out of here so there we go there's one now do another one over here and again, they don't have to match. They don't have to be the same at all. But I'm going to make them at least look like they belong there. All right, so now we have a shape like this. And again, do I put it in, uh, you know, horizontally? Do I put it in vertically? And by the way, when you're working with pieces like this, you know, I have a couple leftovers, right? I have the, the pieces that I cut out. Who's to say that those couldn't serve as some elements elsewhere in our piece? So we can, we can do that. We, can, we have that control. All right, let me grab uh, some blue in here, and uh, again, I'm going to grab kind of create some organic. I'm, I'm trying to find things that might feel like they were inspired by nature. That's kind of my objective right now. And I'm going to just create something that looks like that. <laughs> A really bad mitten? I don't know. You, you decide. And uh, again, when we put them in here like this, we can get something that's going to just really pop out and, uh, and make this fun. Um, all right, and so I'm kind of getting my palette down here. Are any of these colors not working for me? Uh, they're all kind of doing their own thing. I actually like this uh, orange color. I think the goldenrod or whatever we call this is really doing well, and the yellow as well. So I'm going to I'm going to create another shape uh, using this and uh, again let uh, let your muse guide you. Right, we're going to come in here. And find something that really just works in this piece. All right, I'm going to just trim off the edges here. And again, you know, <laughs> what is this? Uh, it's a left hand and one of these. That's what it is. And uh, I might just come in and, and again smooth it up. I have I have the power with my pair of scissors here to come in and just get rid of any of the the things that are a little pointy that are sticking out because of my hasty cutting. There we go. Yeah, it's a little smoother. And again, what I end up doing with this is uh, up to me. I may, uh, I don't want to put, you know, all my orange pieces too close together. So maybe I'll drop it up here. And, I don't know. I'll figure out what to do with that blue. Or maybe we'll lose the blue. It's uh, it's always a prerogative, right? You can come in here and make whatever changes you want. Does that look better like that? And we'll also figure out how to fill in spaces between these if we want to. If we want to. Uh, you know what? I'm going to... I have this scrap of red. This doesn't have to be huge and doesn't have to dominate, but let me grab a couple, a couple just circles of this, and this will be uh, you know just part of our background. I have another 
fairly large piece. And that's the beautiful thing about working with colored paper scraps is that they get a second life. These things definitely never need to go in the trash because every single one of them represents a future palette, depending on what, uh, what your needs are. Um, again, we're going to dry fit everything. We'll move things around. We'll get rid of things if they don't work for us. That's all part of what we can do here. I do like the gray color, by the way. I like that how that's standing out beautifully. So I'm going to do something a little bit larger with that. And let's see. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I have no idea what environment we're talking about here. It's uh, it, it's almost kind of like a uh, something happened in an 80s cup of coffee. That's what the black uh, the the, the background is reminding me of. Uh, you guys, some of you who were around in the 80s with a cup of coffee know exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, let me let me cut some holes into this one as well. I'm gonna just make a kind of a circle. And by the way, when you're working with your utility knife, one of the things that's really helpful is move the paper, not the knife, if that makes sense. Because as you're swinging this knife around, there's always the opportunity that, you know, you can lose control of it and, you know, stick it in your leg or something fun like that. Uh, ask me how I know this. Uh, but by being able to pivot the paper around the knife, it makes it a lot easier to control, weirdly. So, we can do that. So, that's kind of fun. And again, we can, you know, what does this look like if we drop it in there like this? And uh, I have a leftover blob. Maybe I'll just talk, tuck it down there for now. And as we go through here, we're going to figure out what our palette is, what colors are working, what colors aren't working. Uh, let me try this tan color just to see. You know, I'm just going to grab and drop a blob in here and see if it, it actually even, even works. I, I have a theory that it, it's not going to be... Yeah, it's a good organic color, but it really doesn't pop the way I want it to pop against the background. So I'm not going to use that. How about that? And uh, what else did we pull out of here that we thought we might, uh, might work with? Uh, will this hot pink just blend in with the background, or will it uh, actually serve a purpose? Inquiring minds want to know. Uh, you know what? It actually does okay if we put it in places that are fairly well saturated. So, all right. Um, I think this one, I think a lot of these pieces are going to look better if they're kind of running horizontally. Uh, not horizontally, excuse me, vertically here. Kind of top to bottom. Almost kind of like we're creating rows of these different shapes that can work in here. I'm going to create another piece using my uh, my lemon yellow here, something a little bit less uh, less vertical. Let's just grab a and uh, what do I want to do with this here? Again, kind of a fun organic shape. Get rid of that and. Uh, yeah, it's not very interesting. Let me <laughs> let me put something like this. We'll get a divot into it. That'll make it more interesting. There we go. Yeah, see? That sometimes that's all it takes is just to add a little bit more dimensionality to it. And we can drop this in here like this. Uh, and I'm starting to see kind of the pieces aligning the way I want them to. Uh, you know what? I'm going to put some uh, of this pink color. I'm going to match it up here, like I said. Or I could do hot pink, too. I, I have... Now let's see what happens here. I'm going to come in here, I'm going to do something a little bit more... Well, again, sometimes I let the paper talk to me. I say, all right, well, I've got this scrap of paper that I'm working with here. Uh, and if I were to just take a section of this and just say, let's, let's just get rid of all the, the sharp edges. Let's just make everything that we're doing in here kind of rounded. Then uh, what does that look like? And that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. So I'm going to put a, a, just a, a piece of pink right up here in this area. And I'm still, the, the, the jury's still kind of out on this blue color. I mean, it's not a bad color. I'm not sure if it's fitting in with the motif here, but uh, let's find out. All right, I'm going to grab this, uh, this bubblegum pink. And again, let me just pull a chunk out of here, and uh, let's make it fit into the space that we have up there. that and there we go there we go and let's put that right in there and again I might you know I might not want to have everything totally in line here I might want to kind of shift them over so they're kind of crossing each other a little bit that might be a lot a lot more interesting visually than just perfectly straight lines uh, let's see how we're doing here 
the red over a little bit more. And again, sometimes one of the things to think about when you're working on anything is, you know, kind of the center of the piece may often be where the human eye goes to uh, first of all. You might kind of look in the middle and spread out from there. So if you want to put the more interesting objects in the, in the center, what does that look like? How does that change things around? And uh, this is the beautiful thing about dry fitting because we can kind of move things around and say, you know what, if we kind of follow the contours and leave space here, but does that work? Where it looks like this red piece is almost kind of a, an extension of this gray piece and it kind of fits in like that. There's, there's a million different ways to do this, but one of the things you'll find when you're doing anything is that there are better ways, right? Because I can come in here and I can just kind of drop these pieces randomly and go, art, I made art. But there's a certain craft, uh, hopefully, when we come in here, that allows us to be able to say instead, hey, I'm doing this for a particular reason because aesthetically, this these contours work together and that may help really grab people's attention, like these pieces actually belong together. So we can uh, we can play around with that. All right, uh, yeah, I think that goes over there. And uh, I don't hate the blue piece. I don't hate the blue piece. Uh, do we need more of the blue? Uh, well, we need a little something down here at the bottom. You know what, I'm gonna do something relatively simple and I'm gonna come in here and let's, let's create just a piece that will fit in this area down here, if you can see that. And so it's gonna just be kind of a little horizontal worm or <laughs> whatever we're creating here. And there we go. And so if I put that in there, again, Nice anchoring colors. It's like your eyes just want to have kind of a balance of these different things that we can work with. Um, do I want this red in here? If I put this red up here and put something else here, what would that something else be? And let's see. Um, We've matched most of our colors up. You know, the one color we haven't tried uh, yet is this teal color. Again, I'm just going to I'm gonna give it a bold experiment. Let's create a shape that will fit into the space we have for it. And uh, let's just do a quick analysis. No, no. Uh, again, you know, it's not a bad color at all. Uh, but you see it just really gets lost in what's what's in the background. So that's not going to serve our purposes uh, very well at all. all right, so let me move this over here a little bit. Let's move this. You know, and again, you can, one of the things that I have learned sometimes the hard way in art creation is that there are times when you just have to stop. <laughs> you know, when do I, when do I find the time to, to, to stop doing what I'm doing here? And, uh, you know, part of me is thinking, well, we could fit something else in this space here and there's also a space here. And maybe we'll do that. Let me see if there's anything else in my in my bucket of goodies here that will. Oh, you know what? I've got a, a light purple here that will actually, because of the, just the tint, it's got a lot more white in it. Will really pop well. You know what? Let's let's give it a try. So, cut a chunk out of here. All right, and let's. Uh, I don't know, what do we want to do with this? Again, some sort of a uh, organic, mostly rounded shape. Just let the scissors and let your imagination guide you. Okay, so there's that. And how does that look if we put it in like that? It's a little too close to this shape, to be honest. So maybe yeah, put it up there so they're not right next to each other. And uh, what I may do is something a little bit more, uh, more, a little more vertical. Okay, so this will fit kind of in this space here, and again, maybe I'll do kind of a, a weavy line, blobby thing, and I'll weavy line it on the other side as well. All right, now if I put that right like that, again, it's it's standing out. It's not it's not tremendously standing out because the background here is is very magenta, but it kind of works. All right, and so that's really the process. The process is just to figure out what's going to work here. Um, you know, I am finding that the cutout pieces like this and this are really interesting. They're visually interesting, and that's making me think, you know what, maybe I should go and, you know, do a few more cutouts. Maybe there's some room in the blue and in here. And, you know, just for some of these larger pieces, maybe just create a portal 
of some sort that I can work with here. Let's do it with this pink piece. And move the paper where we can. And uh, I don't know, it's gonna look like a space a spaceship by the time we're done. Yeah, you see how that dresses it up? Yeah, again, that's a, that's not a bad bad thing to do at all. Just let a little of the more of the background through. And so those colors really can work together. Alright. And uh, do I want to do the same thing? You know what? This other side might give us a, an opportunity again to kind of cut something out. Let the background through. Oops, let's get that out of there. Yeah, yeah, I think that works really well. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with the blue. Again, not the whole thing. We'll just we'll create something that makes it easy for us to have the background shine through. And it just gives a little bit more dimensionality to this piece. And it looks less like a mitten now, so <laughs> that's, that's a plus. All right, anything else in here that we want to work with? Um, you know what, I'm going to do the same thing with this smaller yellow piece. It's not going to be a big, a big hole, but we'll make one. And that will also distribute our holes throughout the, the piece a little bit more evenly. All right. There we go. There we go. All right, not unhappy with, uh, with how that's coming together. And again, when you look at all these colors and how they're working together, um, Hopefully, you're seeing what I'm seeing, and it's really a very joyful experience. Okay, so now that we have everything where we kind of want it to be, we can make these decisions on the way. We're going to grab our trusty glue stick, uh, and I'm also going to grab a, um, a gluing sheet. Now, I can use just a standard piece of copier or printer paper, and I just like to use this as a way for me to be able to glue the pieces down and, and get less glue on my actual artwork. It just makes it a lot cleaner. Now... I've laid things out in a way that I think is going to work. Does this mean it's permanent? Does it mean that I can't change my mind while I'm gluing things down? Not at all. And what I might do is start with some of the bigger pieces and then build some of the smaller pieces around them. Let me start with the, this gray piece right here to begin with. And let me get some glue on the back of this. And I will just mention that when you're gluing onto a painted surface, sometimes having a sufficient amount of glue is a good idea in that it's, it's not the... I'm not, I'm not going to say it's not a good gluing surface, but it's not as optimal as, like, say, putting it straight on paper, right? And as I mentioned before, if uh, the paint is still wet in any way, it's going to make it even more challenging to, uh, to glue onto. So I'm going to take this piece and uh, we'll drop it right in there. Now, as I have shared with you in the past, if you've seen my videos, this uh, platen roller, the one we actually use to put the paint on the paper, is also one of my go-to tools when it comes to making sure that pasted objects get stuck down firmly. I just roll over this guy and this just allows me to make sure that if there's even pressure and all of the glue on that piece of paper has some sort of contact with the piece of paper underneath it. And you can always come back if you need to roll these every so often as they're going through a drying process if they start to pick up a little that will work. But simple enough we have our first piece down and uh, I'm going to go through this process in, in a very similar way and uh, I'm going to just glue everything down that needs to be glued. I'm not sure we need to do this in real time, so uh, I'll fast forward through this, and then we'll talk about what kind of the next stages are once we get done with that.
Okay, now everything has been glued down. We'll give it a little bit of time to uh, to dry, but uh, for the most part, I'm I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. It's uh, it's got some bright color, and again, you know, when we're building something like this, and we're kind of dealing with all the small parts, sometimes it's hard to keep in in, in mind that at the end of what we're trying to do here, the result is not all the small parts, it's how they all work together. So when I look at this piece of art on a wall, my brain goes, wow, bright and colorful and abstract and, and interesting. And then only in certain circumstances will I home in on a specific part of this and say, oh, look at that, that piece right there, very cool. It's about how all the colors, how the forms, how the contrast, how everything works together. I like this one. I'm gonna take this and put it in the Spectiva Studios Gallery, I'm going to add it into the uh, Out and About series. Um, I've been thinking about a name for this in the back of my mind, uh, and it, it reminds me a little bit, and I'm not sure if it's just me, of, of Mardi Gras in New Orleans, if you've ever had any time, uh, spent any time in New Orleans in Mardi, Mardi Gras. But I'm going to call this um, Around the Corner from Bourbon Street. This is what the name of this is going to be. All the out and abouts have kind of a title that they're somewhere. They're somewhere out there in the world. And that's what this is really kind of a reference to. So, you know, bright and shiny beads, baubles, uh, you know, springtime color, whatever it is we want to have here. But I like how this has worked out. So going to get this signed, going to get this up into the gallery. By the way, you can probably uh, already see what it looks like in the gallery if you look right about here. That's right. And uh, if you're interested in, uh, in procuring this piece, uh, certainly check it out. There'll be a link down below along with, uh, for the materials we've used in this video, we'll share that with you as well. But that's what I wanted to share with you today. This is a, a one hour masterpiece that definitely doesn't take a lot uh, of time to create. And I truthfully like to be able to create several of these at the same time by just putting like four pieces of paper down and saying, okay, different color themes. This is going to be magenta teal. We're going to have another one that's going to be blue yellow. We're going to have another one that's going to be, you know, this color. And uh, it really gives you some really fun foundations to work on. And as you can see, not hard to make, but the results are pretty darn cool when you're done. Anyway, thanks so much for dropping by. Please subscribe if you haven't already. We'd love to be able to talk to you. We drop a video every single week. But that's all I have for you today. This is Spider, and I'll see you next time.